Here we go. New on Sports Center. Shanahan on the turnovers and getting over this game. Kind of describe what happened with those picks. Yeah, I, thought, I mean, the one that he was off on was the first one. Um, just read the coverage wrong and didn't expect someone to be back there and made a bad decision on the first one. Um, second one, um, corner made a hell of a play blitzing. He couldn't get it over him. The guy tipped it and ended up making it to himself. Uh, the third one, scrambling. I didn't really see what happened on it. I mean, I saw the end result. I don't know what happened on the ball, whether 14 made a play, whether they both hit it at the same time. Um, but he broke out of the pocket on a big third down, had George and 14 coming back to him and threw it right at them. And it just bounced up and got another tip. And then um, the fourth one in the third quarter, and he was making the right decision, going to Christian on a check down. And someone hit him from the right side, and the ball came out sideways and went right to their linebacker. So I thought that, you know, the first one was a big mistake. And on the other three was I'm pretty unfortunate for him. He hasn't had a game like this, really. But what, did you, what did you see in his demeanor just as this was going on? What did you see from him? Uh, I didn't mind his demeanor. I mean, he stayed in there, kept battling. I mean, our kind of, you know, our whole team struggled there in the second half. So it just wasn't him. Um, I know he was disappointed not being able to finish it there. But getting that stinger again, it was just wanted to keep him out of there and ready for him to bounce back next week. Could he have gone back in if needed? Uh, possibly. I, I didn't even ask. It's. I know he had a bad stinger, and we had three alignment out at the time, and I want him. I don't want him to go in and not be ready for next week. Uh, and you're concerned about beyond this week? Uh, nothing I'm concerned about, but you know how stingers are. It, it could be worse tomorrow, but I think he'll be all right. Henry Thomas is um, hamstring injury related to Jason Verrett going in in the third quarter. Um, no, we wanted to put. We wanted to get Verrett going a little bit just to mix him in there, get his feet wet. It's been a while since he's played, so. Um, he's been doing some good things in practice, so we want to give him an off out there just a little bit. And um, then I think we mixed in some more as Ambry had that, but also went with Luter a bunch too. Well, he, he's mostly played outside in his career. Uh, it seemed like a, somewhat of a big ask. He hadn't played since 2021 and to play in the slot. I mean, did you guys consider, like, is this maybe too much in a game like this to put him out there? Um, I mean, that's what he's been playing here these last two weeks. That's what he played for the four weeks he was in Houston. Um, that's what he wants to play, and that's what we think he looks the best at and where he can help us the most. So we think all the NFL games are big, um, regardless of which one, especially this time of year. And uh, we felt he was the best guy for us with how practice has been going and for our roster right now. Do you have any early sense on Trent's groin injury? If I don't. Be? You know, he, he tried to go back in. Um, Trainer didn't think it was a good idea, so we'll get the MRI tomorrow and see how it goes. You mentioned that third quarter. You just haven't seen this team kind of get knocked around for a full quarter. Do you think they got demoralized a little bit? What, what was kind of the, the feeling as that was happening? Um, I don't think we did anything on offense, um, and we turned it over. Then we had the punt, which basically was a turnover because of their return and then the personal foul. And, you know, that's a good offense, too. I mean, there's some guys that are hard to tackle. They are going to do that. I thought our defense came out ready to go, and we're doing a decent job. And they only can do it for so long. I thought the way we were struggling on offense in the third quarter um, led to some missed tackles. I think we gave five first downs on penalties today. Um, saw all that happen. So no, I'm not going to sit and say they're demoralized or anything. I just we weren't very balanced throughout our whole team today. And I thought they came out ready to go. But when you turn the ball over, it doesn't really matter. And then the way that third quarter went, that was some bad football. And by the time the fourth started, it was out of hand. The play calling in the first quarter was very aggressive. Ten passes, four, uh, five runs, and a lot of throws down the field. Was that your plan coming into the first quarter to, to attack with the pass like that? Um, no, it was to be balanced. We just, um, you know, it would have came out. We finished with a pick and stuff. So it wasn't any. We didn't make a conscious decision. We're going to come out throwing. It was some of the looks we had and felt we were moving the ball pretty good doing it. It's been so good almost every single week. Well, yeah, not Purdy exactly. Uh, <laughs> check out the numbers entering Monday against teams entering with winning record. He had been stellar, 7-0, 16 passing touchdowns against just two interceptions. That's why coming into the game, he was the leading contender, odds-wise, of winning the MVP. But Monday against the Ravens, completely different. He had four interceptions. That is a career high and the most by Niners in a game since 20. 15. It's cool, you know, I'm honored to be in the conversation. Um, I have one. Uh, man, we just got to keep winning, keep doing what we need to do to get to February. That's all. I thought Lamar had an MVP performance tonight. You know, uh, he, uh, it takes a team to, uh, to create a performance like that. 
but it takes a player to play at that level. To, to, to play at an MVP level, it takes a player to play that way. And Lamar was all over the field doing everything. He operated a, a pretty complicated game plan. I thought Todd and the coaches deserve a lot of credit for the game plan. Lamar operated. He made decisions on the field. And then just keeping plays alive, trusting his offensive line. The offensive line was outstanding with the protection. Lamar trusted those guys. He kept plays alive. He moved in the pocket. He created space for the for the coverage guys. Our guys did a great job of, of scramble drill, of getting open. I think we had a new, new number of plays that were extended that were big plays for us. So just a complete game by Lamar. I mean, the one that he was off on was the first one. Um, just read the coverage wrong and didn't expect someone to be back there and made a bad decision on the first one. Um, second one, um, corner made a hell of a play blitz and he couldn't get it over him. The guy tipped it and ended up making it to himself. Uh, the third one, scrambling. I didn't really see what happened on it. I mean, I saw the end result. I don't know what happened on the ball, whether 14 made a play, whether they both hit it at the same time. Um, but he broke out of the pocket on a big third down, had George and 14 coming back to him and threw it right at them. And it just bounced up and got another tip. And then um, the fourth one in the third quarter, and he was making the right decision, going to Christian on a check down. And someone hit him from the right side. And the ball came out sideways and went right to their linebacker. So I thought that, you know, the first one was a big mistake. And uh, the other three was I'm pretty unfortunate for him. So this win by the Ravens ended up producing a new betting favorite for the MVP discussion. Lamar Jackson, after that big win, he is now your leader. Previous favorite, Brock Purdy, top of the board at minus 215. Uh, yeah, not so much. 20 to 1 now, fifth among all players in contention. More on his plummet here in a second, Michael. Well, we said it before, the other MVPs, the schedule makers. Look at the top of the AFC playoff picture. Baltimore is in the lead position, critical, because remember, only the top team in each conference gets a buy. Miami's right there. And what is the marquee game coming up next week? That'll be Miami and Baltimore. Let's talk about the other quarterback. And in this case, you said it before, once you've won the MVP, which Lamar did in unanimous fashion back in 2019, yep. the standard just becomes a little bit different because yes. we always tend to harken back. But what did you see tonight that, as Michael has shown, has put him in the pole position to win again? That Lamar Jackson does things that other quarterbacks can't. We've watched the San Francisco 49ers absolutely dominate quarterbacks, whether it's the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, Trevor Lawrence. We also saw the same thing against Geno Smith. Lamar Jackson can use his legs in a way that no other quarterback can. Lamar Jackson understands that when I have you in a quandary or a conundrum about whether I'm going to be a passer or a runner, you're now stuck in no man's land. And we also watched him make every right decision tonight. The difference between Brock Purdy and Lamar Jackson wasn't just in the talent, wasn't in the plays made. It was about what he didn't do, which was turn the football over. And so Lamar Jackson may not have the gaudy touchdown numbers, but when you look at what he does for this team, there is no quarterback in the NFL that is asked to do more. There's no question about it. Bottom line, it's hard to win when you throw four picks, as Brock Purdy did. It's also supposedly hard to win when your quarterback throws for 62 yards against Patrick Mahomes, but apparently that's not impossible <laughs> to overcome. More on that. RC will stay here, and we'll talk about the Raiders and the Chiefs here in just a bit. All right, new on SportsCenter, more reaction from Lamar Jackson. I mean, I really don't care about the favorites, you know. Um, that's a great team, though. You don't take anything away from them, you know, defense, offense, and special team as well. Uh, but I, I pretty much like it that way, you know, just being the underdogs. I don't want people looking at us like, oh, we need them to go and do this and that. You know, um, I like playing as the underdog, and I feel like we have more success being that way. Lamar. John said this was an MVP-like performance for you. I know you said you don't really care about those things. You, you just want to win. But I'm curious how you how you felt about it and if you thought it was uh, you know, what kind of performance it was for you. We got the dub. You know, I really don't care about the performance. I just wanted to win. And that's what happened tonight. You know, um, on Christmas, that was my gift. You know, uh, they asked me at an interview uh, a couple weeks ago, like, what would I want for Christmas? And my wish got granted, you know. Uh, you just need to keep going, keep staying locked in, and keep staying focused. Because, you know, we, we know what it was 2019. You know, we was playing against guys like this, winning games, winning, winning regular season games. And when the time came, we didn't finish the season. So we just going to keep taking it a day at a time, you know, practice at a time, and a game at a time. That's all I'm focused on right now. 
Harkening back to motivation of that legendary 2019 season he had individually, not so much collectively for the squad. 20 and 1 Lamar against NFC teams. Of course, you're wondering who was the one loss to. It was the Giants last year. <laughs> He's 5 and 0 this year against the NFC, and obviously that's the conference he would be rare enough to face in Super Bowl 58 if they can get there.